What's up team, Alex Swinson here. Hey, thanks for joining me today. If you're new here, I'm a former Division I college coach and recruiter with 11 years of experience. I'm here to help you or your son reach the next level. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about three tips. I'm gonna be giving you three tips plus one bonus tip at the end of the video about how to be recruited, especially during this time. Right now, we are in the quiet period and you might be watching this video at any point, all right? But we just entered the quiet period and we're gonna be in the quiet period for really the next five months here. And you can take advantage of this in the recruiting process where a lot of people might sit back and take it easy in the recruiting process. These coaches never stop recruiting. It is year around. So really utilize this uh, these three tips uh, now and just through the whole recruiting process as we go. So if you get anything from this video, please select that thumbs up, that like button, and subscribe to my channel. I put out a weekly video on how to be recruited and just better yourself on and off the field. All right, let's hop into it. So I want you to look at it like this. This is your college career and you're preparing to get to that level. And you should be asking yourself, what are you doing to get to where you want to be? And in this case, to be a student athlete in college. You should be thinking about that all the time. What is your path? What is your plan? Okay, and take ownership of that. Don't be so dependent on your parents or your coaches. Yes, let them help you, let them guide you and direct you, but you need to take ownership in this. And if you do that, and you do that in anything in your life, man, you're gonna be successful, no doubt about it. So the way I look at it for these tips that I'm about to go over, they're the same level of importance. And I don't wanna put them in one, two, or three, because that kind of gives it, like uh, two is less important. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go 1A, 1B, 1C, and then a bonus tip at the end. So let's go with 1A. Understand the school's depth chart. This is 1A. Understand, understand the school's depth chart. So for example, if you are a catcher and you are interested in this school or a number of schools, where are they with their catchers as freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors? How many senior catchers are leaving the program, right? If, if you are 2023, how many catchers have they recruited in the 22 class, right? So if they have a bunch of catchers, and usually schools do not bring on any more than four or five guys, very rare, I don't know if I've ever seen six catchers on a, uh, on a roster at the next level in college. It's just not worth it. You don't wanna bring that many. Usually it's around four catchers, okay? So understand the depth chart. If there's a lot of them, okay? then it's probably not smart because they're just not gonna be recruiting your position. You don't wanna go after schools that are not recruiting your position. That's a waste of time, money, and energy, okay? So understand the school's depth chart. Let's get into 1B, and that is create, promote, and update your skills video. I don't care what position you are, you need to have a skills video because this is the best way for exposure and to get on the radar of these colleges and scouts. Guys, they need to know who you are before they come see you. Uh, for the most part, 80% of the time, these coaches are going to look at a kid predetermined. They already know who they're going to watch. Now, there's definitely around 20%, and that's a rough estimate, of they'll freestyle. They'll just show up to a game, but that's probably after or before a guy that they're going to to watch, okay? And the point of your skills video is to promote yourself so they can come watch you play. That is really, really big in this recruiting process. So for example, what does a skill video look like? If you are a middle infielder, again, for the, just this example, one, the video needs to be three minutes or less. These coaches don't have all this time to watch a five, eight, 10, 12 minute video. It needs to be short and sweet to the point. It can be a quick four second Hey, glimpse of your name, your GPA, maybe your top measurables, and 95 exit velocity, and 88 mile an hour, uh, per hour 88 mile an hour fastball, or a 6960. I'm just using examples right now. Something that you do really, really well, and that can be on the academic side as well, as far as SAT, uh, GPA, anything like that, ACT four seconds and then boom it gets right into your highlights and whatever you do really really well or 
best at, show that first. And if you have any game footage, if you gotta hit a home run, show that first. Or if you hit a few home runs, show that first. If you have a bullpen and you're throwing really well and you got it on the radar gun and your velocity is way up and you have it on video, show that first. Or say you have a hammer for, um, for a breaking ball for a pitcher, show that first. Like whatever you do really well. Maybe you run really well down first base and your 60 is like a 6'5". Boom, show that first, and that is your best quality, okay? Show that first. Show whatever it, you do best first, and why is that? To gain attention so they watch the whole video to see, like, hey, dang, this Alex kid can run really well, or you're a catcher, pop time, boom, you throw a bunch of guys out, show that really first. And these clips, these clips, like a, sw a swing can take four or five seconds, boom, you hit it, and you hit a home run, you round it first, umpire might have shown a home run, boom, go to the next video, okay? You don't need to extend it all the way through where maybe uh, it's a an at-bat, so I've seen, I see this a lot, it's an at-bat. Maybe it's a great at-bat, and guys, that is awesome. But these coaches wanna see the swing. They expect you to have a good eye, okay? They expect you to do that, pitchers, if you have like a long video of you pitching, remember, you're gonna have to condense that. Go to the right to the strikeout. Go right to the strikeout, to the fastball up or the breaking ball down. Go right to the good stuff. They wanna see that, remember, because this is gaining attention. Let's get into 1C, and that is being proactive. Guys, I can't stress this enough. You have to be proactive in this to give yourself the best chance. If you're an athlete like me where I was just above average, I mean, I was a good athlete, but I was definitely not a superstar or an elite athlete by any means. I had to be very proactive in this process and not sit back and just hope somebody found me or hope a school or a scout was just going to be in the stands and see me play and I was going to have a heck of a game and all the stars align. Guys, if you're doing that, it, the chances of you being recruited are really, really low. But if you're doing all the things, these top two things that I've told you about, it's going to help you so much go through this process, okay? So be proactive. And then number four, so this is the extra, I guess we could call it 1D, is your name is your brand. What do I mean by that? Make sure that if you are on social media or your relationship with your coaches, that you are doing it the right way and that you have a strong relationship with your coach and you're posting the right stuff on social media because these coaches go on Twitter, go on Instagram, now are on TikTok and Facebook and they will do their homework on you. Okay, I can't tell, me, tell you how many times when I was a coach and I was recruiting a guy, I really liked the guy and maybe I went on their social media handle and I saw a bunch of this stuff that I did not need to see and huge red flags and we just, we can't take chances on that. We can't afford to bring in a guy and just hope that he's going to be okay. No, 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 no. We only have 35 at the time, 35 now, it's around 40, 42. We can't bring in a guy that could damage the locker room because the locker room is just too important. So your name is your brand. For instance, my name's Alex Swenson. So when they hear Alex Swenson or they mention it to another coach or they look it up on social media, what are they seeing? And what are the coaches saying about you? Okay, your relationship with your coaches are really important. And I get it. Not all of these coaches are great, but you need to learn how to deal with that. Okay, because these coaches, these high school coaches and summer ball coaches, they can help promote you, okay? But these coaches are gonna call them really anyway if they like you and ask you about you, about your character, what type of teammate are you? Are you a leader? Do you work on and off the field? You know, how, how is he, is he coachable? Your name is your brand and it says a lot about you. So I hope you took something away from this video. Let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. You can comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.